Hi, I'm Tyler, and this is the Fox Valley Film Critics. In this special, very outdoor episode of the show, we're going to be discussing the next in the lineup of the AFI's Top 100 American Movies, African Queen, as well as the newest movie, It Chapter 2. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to the show, brought to you by Group Think Productions and FBTV. Joining us once again for this very smoky episode yeah, of the show smoky is Tony. Indeed. Hi. I'm happy to be here. Yeah. We're going to be... Uh, Campfire and very fall and... Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you may be wondering why we're outdoors for Fox Valley Film Critics by the Fire. And it's because we are currently working on the Halloween special. And we need, only had enough fire starters to get one fire starting going. So <laughs> instead of wasting all of my fire starters we got one and we're just improvising two birds one fire starter so yeah right. this is going to be a <laughs> shorter episode i assume just because i just partially because i don't think we have as much to say on either one of the movies but. yeah 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 so uh, what's your thoughts on the african queen uh i really am a fan of the movie i had seen it a couple of years ago and then i revisited it for revisited it for this uh it's i mean I think what's more interesting than the plot for me is the fact that that movie was made at all. Just because filming on location in Africa like that back in like what 1950 Yeah, early 50s. Yeah, I, I mean that was just kind of unheard of. So I I that I really appreciated it and you look behind the scenes of what happened just the the kind of chaotic mess that was to make that movie and then the fact that it turned out so well done is kind of what gets me going also the plot the the, the plot is is fairly fairly decent for its time i uh obviously the two leads in the movie are fantastic and whatnot but yeah you know it has obviously some of the uh special effects there are a few green screen moments that didn't quite or not green screen but uh projection moments that didn't quite uh hold up but yeah, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of the movie. I'm afraid we're going to have an Eric Andre moment where at some point this is going to cut off and we're both going to catch on fire. Yeah. Because the <laughs> yeah. way, it's very windy tonight, I, if you can't tell. Yes, I'm so, afraid my entire pant is going to set on fire, but we're going to review this. <laughs> so, The African Queen, I mean, the production story behind that is a story of itself. I mean, East, yeah. Clint Eastwood made a movie that was loosely based on it. Yeah, yeah. I forget uh, the name of it. Something like uh, Black Heart, White Elephants or something right. like that. It's based off a book written by, I think, one of the screenwriters? I could something be wrong. Like that. Yeah. So, and so, yeah, I mean, obviously this is yet another John Huston movie, which they're rapidly becoming one of my favorite go-tos for the show because the last two have been great. We got to do... Just just in this list, we did Maltese Falcon and Treasure of the Sierra Madre. Wow! So, yeah, going through his filmography is something else. And this is probably his most accessible film. Yeah. I remember I watched this when I was still getting into older films for the, a couple of years ago, back in college, and I found this to be one of the more easy to watch older films in the fifties. I agree. Partially because it's such a luscious looking film, but the plot's also pretty. It's easy to follow. And, and it's it, it's adventurous. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, it's not a complicated film at all. It's just uh, two people on a boat trying to survive a difficult situation, and the movie is mostly just their reportage, them just talking back and forth and complaining. Yeah. You get the one of the more uh, laid-back Humphrey Bogart performances yeah. in addition to, I think, Catherine Hepburn? Yes, yeah. Yeah. I And I, I think what also is kind of nice about it is it's one of the first movies of that time period that kind of moves fairly quickly quickly to say it's like there's something always while while some of the dialogue scenes you know it's 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 a film of its time it's still there's always that feel that something is going to happen or something needs to happen i i'm a i'm a fan of it's kind of like the the two characters are it's kind of like they're the odd couple of each other where these two people who probably never really would work together ever yes. end up being forced to she, be she, together and get through 
you know. She's this. a missionary, and he's a grizzled New York drunk. Uh, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's the odd couple, but with love and yeah. sexual tension. And death. <laughs> and death. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the ending is a little outlandish because yeah. they end up going, deciding it's like, we're going to go to war with the Germans. I think this is set during World War One. World War One. Yeah. yeah. So, and so the movie ends that they're trying to escape Africa up down the river, and they accidentally run into a German warboat, and they're like, "We're gonna bomb them." <laughs> yeah. And their plan it immediately fails. Yeah. And I don't want to say what ends up happening, obviously, but it, yeah, it's a happy ending movie. It, so it's it like is. It's, I heard that the book it's based off of isn't such a happy ending. So I, I mean, I, I don't want to. I would believe that just based on how out there the way the movie is resolved is. Yeah. Like, I was just thinking, it's like, man, this a movie ends on a big coincidence. Mm. Yeah, it's one of those movies where it's like, in its time, uh, uh, that ending's too dark. We can't end a movie like that. People are going to watch it. So, happy, love, we have to end it like that, even though the entire film was pointing a different direction. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. I mean... I mean, e- even the production was pointing a different direction. Like, have, yeah. you, have you ever heard the, dysentor- the, the dysentery story from behind the scenes? I heard that almost the entire cast and crew got dysentery, right? Except for two people, yeah. mm-hmm. Bogart yeah. and Houston, and it's because they only drank whiskey the entire time <laughs> they were in Africa. Yeah. Apparently, the, uh, the insects and whatnot would die after biting them because they had so much alcohol in their blood. <laughs> It's something I heard, but I, I mean, I could be wrong. But yeah, I, I mean. I believe that about John Huston. Yeah, this production in itself is a story. And the fact that this movie turned out to be, I mean, one of the, a, a really beloved movie of its time, even though the production went so horribly wrong, it speaks for itself. And I, I told someone I was working with at Men's Warehouse, he's an older gentleman. I'm like, today I have to go review the, uh, the African Queen. He, he just sparked a music. Up. I love that movie. I've seen it a hundred times. Uh, I was, I was just, yeah, that it makes sense because it, it was a really good movie for, for what it is. Sure. I think we're gonna go ahead and cut it off at this point because mm-hmm. we need to move on to the next segment. Join us for the following segment. Where we'll be discussing it, Chapter Two. Stay tuned. back and my eyes are burning in the fire. <laughs> I, I never seen an, I thought I'd have an episode of this show that made me think I was going to go blind. But I know. My, I, I feel like my, my legs are going to just set on fire. I mean, that's nice because it's nice. You've got a good fall chill going on yeah, right now. Yeah, it so. is. It's a nice warm. Speaking of fall chills, what do you think of <laughs> It Chapter 2? Well, um... Don't wake up the neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I will, I'll try not to. Um, I think that Stephen King just doesn't know how to end his stories, so movies will just never be that good when they're based on his stuff if you try to stick to the original. Well, I mean, I don't, I haven't read the book version of it, so I can't speak to what the actual structure is, but I heard the way the book is structured is that it's both halves take yeah. place concurrently in the structure of the narrative. Yes. And I can kind of see that because this movie is almost a, a beat for beat. Uh, follow, a remake of the first movie with adults actors. It is. Which I will just say, I am surprised by how many people who loved the first movie just absolutely hate this. And I'm kind of glad. I mean, not that I'm glad it's bad, but I'm glad that we agree on this because yeah, okay. that first movie was. It was really a performance movie that was held together by the fact that the kid actors were good. Yeah. And yeah. The, moment, the moment you lose the kid actors as the main actors, it all just falls apart. Uh, There's nothing holding it together. Yeah, no. I With the first It, I really enjoyed the first It because, you're right, because of the performances. Like, the, the children, and I liked uh, Skarsgård as Pennywise. But other than that, I, I mean, the plot is like, you know, it's, it's whatever. And the problem is that the plot is even worse for the second movie and it falls apart even more because I feel like the only standout for me in this movie, I feel like everyone did okay. Like everyone hit the mark. I thought 
Bill Hader did good. I didn't think he did as good as the internet told me he was going to do when I went to see, like, is he going to be nominated for an Oscar? I was a like, Bill Hader, and then I left the movie, and I was like, yeah, okay. He He's did a fine. good job in the movie. Yeah, it was, it. The, the script doesn't give him anything for him to do, so no. it's not like, it doesn't really give anyone anything to no, do. No, no one does, it's. It's v- after the first person kind of goes off on their own and experiences their flashback moment, it's very predictable what's going to happen through the rest of the movie. Everyone kind of just goes off on their own and has their flashback to the kids. And I loved all the flashbacks because I, f- I loved the kids. I liked seeing the kids do their stuff, except for the fact that the de-aging technology in this movie was so apparent to me for whatever the stranger thing kid what's his name oh i i I didn't notice that but i heard a lot of people were complaining about the audio his audio being warped really badly ah okay i noticed his face looked really weird to me it was kind of like that uncanny valley i'm like that's not a person but uh you're not a person yeah yeah i i don't know i thought i thought the story was weak and i i I, I just found it ironic how the whole time they're joking about how the main character is this writer whose movies always get changed at the end because he doesn't know how to end his novels. And then they try to stick true to the ending of the book a little bit, and it just didn't work for me. Uh, I don't know if it's the fact that it's true loyal to the book or not loyal enough to the book. Yeah. Or, I mean, I would say... Or if this is a book that can even be made into a movie. I don't even know if the book's good enough at this no. point. Like, cause the, 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 this ending does not become the setup of the story because first setup is about like the underlying bigotry and hatred and bad things that are under the nice surface of Derry. And then the, sec- the sequel is about them revisiting this as an adult and realizing that they haven't really gotten over the trauma and that it's affected their lives profoundly. Yeah. And the plot really isn't about that. It's just them going through Derry again, dealing with Skarsgård or yeah. dealing with Pennywise with no internal logic or consequence to how this is supposed to work. Like, it would have been interesting to me if maybe if they could not, if, if Pennywise wouldn't bother to hurt them. Yeah. Like, maybe if right. maybe if the rule was, like, Pennywise is just going to go after new kids and he's just going to mock them the whole time and just constantly show up in the background and yeah. be like, you can't hurt us because you're not kids anymore, but I'm not gone yet and you right. haven't forgotten about gonna me. I'm just going to stay here. There's not even any, any rules about what can can or can't work like the kid gets stabbed the one guy gets stabbed even though it's made very clear that the only way to get hurt by pennywise is to believe that pennywise can hurt you yeah which that's dumb i i yeah it's a lot of things fell flat for me it's the the it it wasn't nearly as creepy as the first one except for that i love that part under the bleachers i thought that part was oh that was cool that was chilling i the problem is why all all these all these side characters, if, if it's a character that isn't a main character going to meet Pennywise, I know this person's going to die. If it's a main character facing off with Pennywise, for some reason Pennywise is just like, you know what, I'm not going to eat you this time around, even though you're the ones who killed me last time. I'm just going to let you run away from giant, um, wh- whatever that restaurant guy is chasing him. I'm like, am I supposed to be scared of this, this cartoon Paul Bunyan chasing little kid throughout the... The set pieces are so dumb in this movie. It, yeah, I just, I don't think, I think, I no, I don't, I just don't think there's a need to watch this. Yeah, I agree. I mean, there's, there's infinite, well, I was going to say there's infinitely better horror movies to watch this season, but I can't think of a, what's a, what's a good, a better horror movie from this year? I haven't seen Midsummer, but what, what can you I, I, I was going to say Midsummer, um, I, which was... Which was okay. I, I, I thought it was more shock value. I thought a fun movie was um, the uh, the hide and seek movie. Oh, I've, I've, I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to think of the name. It was Ready or Not. Okay. It was it was very fun and very entertaining. It ends in a way you wouldn't expect. And Go I, see Ready or Fun for all your Halloween needs, or better yet. Just rewatch a good horror yeah. movie that's on DVD readily at your local Redbox. Honestly. That's all the time you have for this segment. Join us for the final segment. We'll be getting a brief movie recommendation. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome back. Uh, we're going to hand things over to Tony now for the movie recommendation. Okay, 
my movie recommendation. Um, is it is it okay that my movie recommendation was what I just brought up? If I can go more into detail. How dare you? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> it is ready or not. Um, you that, monster. Yeah, that is my movie recommendation. It, it kind of went over a lot of people's heads. Um, it it did okay, I think, at the box office, but. I recommend this movie just because it was a very unique and different approach on the way like horror movies, horror com- the horror comedy genre. It was a very different approach to how how to how to make those. I, I thought the storyline itself was entertaining and exciting, and it felt like it was made by someone and not made by like a company yeah i mean mean, yeah it was a very original story and it felt like people cared about this movie when they when they made it um it it didn't feel like for example it too it didn't feel like oh we have to make this because people want to see scary and people like scary clowns like no this movie was made by someone who had this weird idea and thought this could never be a movie but i'm gonna make it and it it was just a lot of fun the performances in this movie i had not really heard of any of these people, but they were all phenomenal. There was no, like, weak link in the movie. Uh, every single performance was outstanding. That main chick, look up her name. It's not that main chick, but she is going places. I can guarantee you within the next year or two you're going to see her in everything. But, uh, yeah, I would recommend, uh, I'm just going to double down and recommend Ready or Not. It's. I don't know if it's still in theaters because of the the way box office things have been going, but definitely check it out when it inevitably comes out on one of the thousands of streaming services. I'm not crying because of the recommendation. I'm no, crying because I, of the fire. I just literally started tearing up, and it is because of this fire. That's all the time we have for this episode of the Fox Telly Film Critics. <laughs> I can't handle it. <laughs> I can't, no. Thanks uh, for having me. If you want to find uh, past recordings of the show, you can do so at the Good League Productions YouTube page. You can follow me on Twitter at any social critic. That's critic. We'll have to see at the end of it. And you can find my written reviews at Legal Insurrection and Geeks Under Grace. I'm Tyler with the Fox Villa Filmworks. Have a wonderful day. Peace. <laughs> Getting up. Oh. Dude, right as you started tearing up. <laughs>